The God Valley flashback has begun and Kuma's backstory has been one of the saddest I've seen in a while. What up y'all, back again with another video. We got that 1095 One Piece chapter review. A lot of work went into this video, man. So man, I'll appreciate it if y'all hit that like button and if y'all hit that subscribe button. We trying to hit 50 likes, 50 subscribers. So man, if you're a real One Piece fan, stay tuned for this video. Kuma's backstory was just honestly sad. Seeing that he was born into a life of slavery, it's sad because Kuma never actually had the opportunity to actually be a kid. His existence and his race was leaked to the world government at birth. Kuma's half buccaneer and half human, and buccaneers are known for their absolute strength, which is why Kuma as a kid was ridiculously strong. Kuma finds out from his dad that his mother died, and it's sad because it gets to a point where they feel some sense of relief knowing that because the mother has passed, she doesn't have to watch them live that hellish life as a slave. So from this point on, she's living in a better place. Kuma's even being forced to adopt the mentality that most adults, if any at all, can actually survive at all. He's forced as a kid to bear the mental fortitude that comes with being a slave, not even being a slave and dying a slave, but being a slave and living through it, surviving through it, just to be on the other side. And honestly, it makes you understand the quality of his character and why he did what he did when he fought with Zoro back in Thriller Bark. But if you hit that like and subscribe button, I can probably tell you why he actually did that. I think it was to test the quality and the integrity of Zoro's relationship with Luffy. Zoro took Luffy's pain, stress, every sort of physical detriment that Luffy suffered in that arc and said nothing about it. Two years later, until this day, Luffy knows absolutely nothing about it whatsoever. People do things in this day and age with the almost with the intent of being recognized for it, but to do something of that caliber and that capacity without wanting recognition at all shows the integrity of your character. It's almost like the difference between putting nails on the board and building a house. Anybody can put nails on the board. Not everybody can build a house. Kuma would have rather taken death as opposed to live through that experience. And it's sad because as a child, he's expected to have the mentality that most adults can't actually handle, if any at all in this day and age. This chapter actually creates a dark reality and full circle of Kuma's life. He was born a slave of the Celestial Dragons and he died a slave of the Celestial Dragons. When you think about it, Kuma agreed to the modifications proposed to the world government and in this sense, he lost his humanity. So yes, physically he was still alive, but mentally he was gone. The saddest part of this chapter was watching Kuma admit to his father that his masters were treating him well. and. It's almost like adopting this comfortability complex where you're in such a bad and desperate situation that you convince yourself that you're being treated well in order to just be able to cope with just how bad your existence currently is. That was tough to read. The flashback gets even sadder. Kuma's dad is talking to Kuma about Nika and he's going on about the drum, the heartbeat and whatnot. And the celestial dragon comes in and kills Kuma's dad. Kuma's expression is just completely blank and I'm not even surprised. When you go through so much pain consistently to the point where that's your entire existence, more pain won't actually surprise you because of how hurt you already feel. So not that Kuma doesn't feel it, he just can't express it anymore, which is why he has that blank expression. I'm very sure Kuma's dad is dead at this point because time passes by several years. It turns out that the Celestial Dragons every three years host this tournament where the most problematic slaves are actually put out into the wild and they're hunted. And Kuma actually tries to escape 
where he's actually scolded by the other slaves because if one slave escapes, the rest of them get punished. Interestingly enough, they're actually found by Ivanko and Jenny, who are current members. Well, I'm not sure about Jenny, but Ivanko is a current member of the Revolutionary Army. This explains how they met. St. Figurland Garland definitely has to be like the cousin or the brother, uncle or dad of Shanks because they look way too similar to each other. It's actually ridiculous. Shanks is a celestial dragon as far as I know and he was found after the God Valley incident by the Roger Pirates. And the fact that he had a casual meeting with the girls, so they actually said that because it's you, we'll allow it this time. So he has a level of status and respect. It makes me sit there and wonder what's the relationship between the Gorosei and Shanks, Shanks and Saint for Garland, because at this point in time, they're way too interlinked. So back to the present, right? So as I anticipate the last chapter, Saturn let himself get hit by Bonnie because he actually says, if I wanted to dodge, I would have just dodged. I actually let myself get hit. Luffy and Kizu were both out the fight. I mean, Luffy ran out of gear fifth, but he did run out of gear fifth against Kaido and then he just jumped himself back into it. So that I'm like, you're definitely out just to progress the plot. Kizuru got an advanced contrast hockey punch to the brain. So I know that one definitely hurt because he actually sat there and said, I'm going to be out for a while. I mean, I think that's just a convenient way to write him out. Sanji's German genetics mean nothing in the eyes of Saturn because he literally blinked and Sanji got hurt. Like I'm talking blood out the mouth type stuff. This just shows you that despite the upgrades that they got in Wano, they still have ways to go before they're ready to take on the Gorosei. Think about it. I'm still a strong believer that the Gorosei will be the Straw Hat's final opponents, but I definitely don't believe that they are ready to face the Gorosei. But remember, Zoro did say that after every island, they actually power up several levels. So I think by the time they get to that point where they're ready to go against the Gorosei, they'll be strong enough to be able to fight the Gorosei on even terms. Saturn doesn't even hesitate to try and kill Luffy. I mean, he's down and out, why not? But he has Bonnie right where he wants her. This is just me speculating. I think Kuma is going to Egghead. I think he's going there with the intent to kill Saturn. There's been constant buildup about this grand egghead incident that'll change the course of the world. And I think that'll either involve the death of a Gorosei or the Gorosei being critically injured while Saturn being the Gorosei in question. They actually reported Kuma to Saturn when he made that attempt to escape. Bonnie is at the mercy of Saturn. Kuma is on route to kill Saturn. But then again, Kuma is a pacifist, so I don't think he really believes in violence unless it's necessary. So I think he's going there with the intent to protect Bonnie, but I think that'll lead to Saturn dying. To wrap up, this chapter was so heartbreaking. It was a fire chapter, but it was definitely heartbreaking, especially understanding the relationship that Kuma has had in the past with the Celestial Dragons, and honestly, the relationship he had with his dad. It's really allowing us to connect the pieces in terms of where Kuma's heading right now, and it's allowed me to even think about just that full circle moment between Kuma being born a slave, but also dying a slave. You really get to see that at this point in time, the Straw Hats are definitely not ready to fight the Gorosei, at least not yet. They're definitely within close distance, but there's still ways for them to go. And I understand that they got power-ups from Wano and whatnot, but they still need to deal with the Blackbeard Pirates, Cross Guild, and also trying to find the One Piece while also competing against Shanks. And then the world government and then the Gorosei. There's a lot on the plate right now. And to be frank with y'all, I'm here for every part of it. But that's it for me. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll holla at y'all later, man. Peace.